Hello. I decided to do an impromptu live because I had such a great response to a post recently where I talked about how I manage my suicidal thoughts that I've had all of my adult life. So I'm 58 now and my first suicidal thoughts were at 19. I have had them ever since. I live with them. I don't like them. They're scary. They're always a sign that I'm sick. But I've also learned to manage them and I know that I saved my life. I was definitely going down a path where I didn't think I was going to be here after age 50. And I want to encourage everybody who watches this to not only watch this if you happen to be suicidal in the moment or you're depressed. Watch this when you're stable because the true secret to managing bipolar is creating a plan when you're stable that you can pull from when you get sick. When I used to get suicidal, before I even knew I had bipolar, of course, I, I had no plan. So I was just sick and I was scared and I didn't know what to do. And I, I'm amazed that I'm here and I know how serious this is. Now it's so different. I can't even begin to tell you how different my life is. And what's interesting is that my thoughts are the same. I still have psychotic suicidal depression. I have suicidal hallucinations and delusions. So I'm gonna talk about some really serious topics but I'm gonna do it in a way that I'm gonna read from one of my latest books. And I thought I could read a part of the suicide chapter in this book about how I prevent suicide and what I do. And we can have a little talk in the comments section and you can ask me your questions. And then I can make this a video that you watch when you're well so that you can use it when those intrusive, awful, and often psychotic suicidal thoughts come in. Because you know what? We have bipolar and the majority of people with bipolar disorder have suicidal thoughts because it's one of our symptoms. Suicidal thoughts in bipolar actually have nothing to do with who you are as a person. They have nothing to do with your life. So they are not a, a reaction to something that has happened to you. Almost always in bipolar disorder, they're internally generated. So there might be a trigger for them but that just means it has hit that part of your brain that creates the suicidal thoughts that are there because you have bipolar disorder. Now, all humans can have suicidal thoughts. We know that, of course. And I also want to be very clear that talking about suicide in a Western culture is very, very different than talking about suicide and suicidal behaviors in other cultures. I lived in Japan for four years. I also studied in China and lived in Hawaii for all of my high school. And I traveled through Asia for almost 10 years off and on. And believe me, it is a different perspective on suicide in Asian countries as it is compared to Western countries. A lot of this has to do with religious beliefs. So whatever you think about suicidal behaviors, whatever you think about having it, etc. Let's remember that in terms of bipolar disorder, we are talking about symptoms that come from an illness, not from society and not from something that happened to us. Triggers can make us more suicidal, but the majority of us with bipolar get suicidal when the event itself does not justify what's going on. So I'm going to read to you from my last book. It's called OMG, That's Me, Volume 2. And Dave uh, Mowry, who is a very, very well-known bipolar writer, in fact, his first book in this series, OMG, That's Me, Volume 1, is one of the best-selling bipolar disorder books of all time. So he approached me. I've known him for many years, and I've helped him get a lot of work online. That's how we met um, when I was working for BP Magazine. And he said, I want to take your essays and all of your BP Magazine articles and your blogs from all over the world and put them in a book. And that's this book. And I recommend this book if you like stories and you like to learn from stories and just like more memoir style, you will love this book. The I know this is sort of amazing, but the essays and blogs in this book have over 15 million views around the world. Some of the blogs in here have a million, blue, uh, a million views a piece, so that's amazing. So let's get started and then I wanna hear what you think. So this is called Straight Talk About Suicide. I wrote this in the early 2000s, and I remember when I wrote it because I was suicidal when I wrote it. So I thought, I think you might enjoy this. It's the most difficult topic in bipolar disorder to talk about, and the one that needs to be discussed the most. This essay talks openly, calmly, and honestly about living 
with suicidal thoughts. My story. I know from personal experience that even those of us with chronic bipolar symptoms can learn to live with and prevent suicidal thoughts. I've had suicidal thoughts and hallucinations and delusions for more than 30 years. Just to let you know, guys, my last suicidal thought was about three weeks ago. I still have these thoughts and visions when I get stressed. I used to call them visions. I didn't know what a hallucination was before I was diagnosed with a psychotic disorder. And so I used to call them my death images or death visions. I had no idea what they were, that I was having psychotic suicidal depression from age 19. In fact, while writing this article, I took a break and went outside to cut some roses. As I bent over, okay guys, I want you to know, you, you understand the topic we have right here. This is not an easy, so I just, is everybody ready? Are you okay with talking about this right now? As you can see, I'm absolutely fine. There's nothing going on. I am not suicidal in this moment. I'm stable. I've got hair in my face, but I'm fine. So I want you to know that we're gonna talk about something here that's difficult, but the reason I'm talking about it is that I will always show you what I do to deal with it. I will never post anything on my Instagram or any of my social media when I'm ill. I don't operate online when I'm ill. If I'm ill, I go take care of myself and I come back. That's why you can always trust my pages and my comments. I'm never manic, depressed, or psychotic when I work online. I don't believe in doing that. So, all right, are you ready? And this is a true story, by the way. I remember this. I think it was about 2000, maybe 2005. While writing this article, this is so amazing that I used to live with this. I took a break and went outside to cut some of my mom's beautiful roses in the backyard. As I bent over, I saw my eye get poked out by a stick in the ground. I then had the thought that I wished I was dead. But instead of getting scared by these thoughts, I cried a bit at how unfair this illness is. I got mad at my bipolar disorder, admitted to myself that I'd taken on too much this week and I needed a break. I went back inside and finished this article. I had, it was an article for BP Magazine. It was due, I'm a professional. I wasn't too surprised that I had suicidal thoughts when I went outside. I've been suicidal off and on this week simply due to bipolar, which is why I chose this topic for my BP Magazine article. Passive and, suicidal, and active suicidal thoughts. I was, I think, the first person in bipolar to talk about the difference between passive and suicidal thoughts. You hear this all the time now because I've, you know, 15 million people have watched my stories and people, of course, who work in suicidal, you know, suicide prevention, et cetera, will use these terms. But I can tell you that when I was diagnosed in the 1990s, no one ever talked to me about this, ever. And there was no, there was no online, of course. And then when I, I had the first bipolar blog, and I remember the first times I started writing about it and people had never heard the term passive and suicidal thoughts. So I'm going to read this section and then we can have a chat. You may be wondering how it's possible to be suicidal for more than 30 years and not try to die by suicide. I have never attempted suicide, even though I thought about it and have come very close. There are two types of suicidal thoughts in my opinion, passive and active. Mine have mostly been the passive kind in that I picture my death and I hope for my death, but I rarely have a very specific plan. I think this is one of the things that saved me. Now I will tell you, that in 2010, my suicidal depression was so severe that I had 13 bilateral ECT treatments, which in many ways I think saved my life. And I was actively suicidal at that time. So one of the reasons I'm such a big believer in prevention is that it gets worse if we don't do something about it. And I wanna reiterate something here. Nothing, nothing was wrong with my life, nothing. This was suicidal depression from bipolar disorder. There was nothing wrong with my life. In fact, it was quite good. Examples of passive suicidal thoughts. These are all mine. I'd be interested to know if you've ever experienced anything like this. I wish a bomb would drop on my house and I would die. Everything would be better if I walked in front of a bus. That was a big one for me for a long time. I wish I would get cancer and die. This is one that has really stayed with me when I, when I get sick. And another one that I have is, if I get cancer, I will not get treatment. That's another suicidal thought that I have. And I'm like, where does it come from? It's just, they're so bizarre, aren't they? But remember, suicidal thoughts pull from your environment. So you will pull something from your environment into your suicidal thoughts. So bombs, cancer, that kind of thing. 
Life would be easier for everyone if I were dead. Now, examples of passive suicidal hallucinations, which we don't talk about enough. I see myself walking into traffic and being hit by a car. I then stand over my body and see myself dead. I used to call these death images. I lived in Japan for four years with untreated bipolar, so you can imagine how wild that was. I lived in Tokyo and Osaka. In fact, that's where I met Ivan, my partner of 10 years, who has bipolar one that I wrote loving someone with bipolar disorder about. So I met another person with bipolar in a bar in Tokyo while I was manic and we stayed together off and on 10 years and then friends for 20 years. I see myself being mauled by dogs as I jog down the street. Those two being hit by a bus flying in the air and being hit by being bitten by dogs in my calves have stayed with me since the beginning. These were very scary for the first part of my life until I was finally diagnosed and learned they were hallucinations. Goodness gracious, can you believe that? I didn't even know. Now, once again, let's check in here. I'm talking about bipolar and suicide because we have to, because it's one of our main symptoms. And it's the number one reason that many of us have a hard time. So let's talk openly. Next, examples of active suicidal thoughts. So please be aware that I'm about to talk about this. I am fine, we are fine here but I'm gonna say some of this out loud because we're going to talk about what to do when these show up. And remember, this is from OMG, That's Me, Volume Two. Very easy to read book and very enjoyable in my opinion. Bestseller, yeah. I'm going to get a something and kill myself. I'm gonna run my car into that pole and end it all. I'll often get, I'm gonna run my car off a bridge. I'm gonna run my car into a brick wall. I'm going to rob a store and make the police shoot me. Now, remember, these are thoughts, but they, when you're actively suicidal, I actually believe we're psychotic, usually when we're suicidal. The thoughts are not just thoughts, are they, guys? They are thoughts that drop into your mind fully formed and you feel them immediately like they're real. That's why I think most of us who are suicidal are delusional. And I believe that most of us have psychotic suicidal depression. I don't think suicide on its own really exists without a delusional kind of thinking. So I, I, I wanna write some more about that. But I have some of the most bizarre thoughts. Just reading this is scary, isn't it? Suicidal thoughts feel so real, but they're truly a symptom of an illness called bipolar disorder. Active thoughts are markedly different from passive thoughts and passive suicidal hallucinations. My former partner, Ivan, who also has bipolar disorder, was actively suicidal. This was really rough. I write about this in Loving Someone with Bipolar Disorder. Was actively suicidal after a three-month hospital stay for psychotic mania. Can you imagine being so sick that they can't, they could not get him better in three months? Uh, he was in restraints in the hospital. We had to do guardianship. And one of the reasons I know so much about all of this is that I lived with somebody for 10 years who was very, very, very sick with bipolar. And then we we both got better. And I would never say it was easy, but we both survived this really serious illness. When it happened, I managed to get Ivan to the hospital when he was suicidal, where he was then put on an antipsychotic and survived. This was the scariest time of my life. Ivan later told me that he had, how he was going to do it. I'm not gonna read this part. And you can read what happened in the safety of your home and read about this. Now, my book, Loving Someone with Bipolar Disorder, is about our time together. We both survived and learned how to live with and manage our suicidal thoughts. Once we learned to manage these thoughts, we still had them, but they never were going to kill us. And I, I often worry that one day they'll be so severe that I won't know what to do, but so far I have a really, really good plan in place, so I'm ready for them when they happen. Suicidal thoughts are seductive, okay? My bipolar disorder is so intense that it rips through my entire body like a tornado. At other times, the bipolar makes me catatonic. It's as though all of the life has been sucked out of me and all that's left is a shell. I can be restless and suicidal or catatonic and suicidal. It all depends on the mood swing. Another important piece of information that a lot of people don't understand. And it's interesting because I will post about this on Instagram and people get very mad at me. Have you seen my post where I say the absolute most dangerous mood swing is psychotic dysphoric mania? That's the truth if you wanna know statistics. And I don't know why, but readers get very, very upset with me and think that I am discounting the seriousness of depression. And I just wanna go, do you know what dysphoric mania is? 
Dysphoric mania in bipolar disorder is a depression episode with the energy of mania. So you can see why there is an enormously high risk if somebody is dysphoric, manic, and suicidal. It's basically weaponized depression. It's energized depression. And if you look at statistics, especially fighting or getting in trouble, trouble with the police, going to jail, almost always in bipolar, it's a dysphoric psychotic episode, often suicidal. So please know, without question, the most dangerous episode in bipolar disorder is psychotic dysphoric mania, pretty much agitated depression with the energy of mania. So please know that when I say that on my post, you can support me in the comments section when people think I'm discounting depression. Nope, this is manic depression, literally, dysphoric mania. So I want us to just understand that, okay. But now here's something that's rather fascinating. Sometimes suicidal thoughts feel comforting. They seduce you and talk to you and obsess you to the point that you literally think of nothing else. If you're a family member or friend, it might be impossible to imagine this. However, if you can understand that suicide is never about wanting to end life, and we know this, it's about ending pain, it makes more sense that someone in so much pain would think that being suicidal and doing it would provide relief because our brains are distorted. I think we're psychotic, I really do. Our brains are distorted when we're suicidal, so we are so twisted by our thinking that we think leaving is the answer instead of getting help. And I under, I've lived it you know, all of my adult life and I understand it, but if we talk about it openly when we're stable, we will be ready when it shows up when we're sick. The next time you're suicidal, observe how it works. Observe what the bipolar disorder is doing in your brain and how it's taking over the real you and creating an alternative universe where suicide is an option. I mean, when we're stable, we don't think about suicide. It's, just not, it's not part of the human condition. I now approach my suicidal episodes with curiosity, even though I'm in horrific pain. I say to myself, ah, there it is again. There's that darn suicidal depression. That's bipolar. My bipolar is raging. It's lying to me. Julie, look at these thoughts. Look how crazy they are. They're not real. Observe them. Don't listen to them. You will never act on this, Julie. You've made a promise to yourself. You will never act on this. It means you're sick. Your meds are not working. You need help. You're stressed. You've been triggered by something or you're just, it's just that time of year. It's not real, it's an illness. It takes practice to do this, but you can observe and talk back to these thoughts. So what do you do if you're actively suicidal? And you're probably not right now. If you are, I'm glad you're watching. But if you're not, I want you to memorize this so that when you are, it comes back to you. You're gonna remember my face. You're gonna remember me talking to you and telling you what to do and you're gonna go, oh, that's right. Julie told me it would be here, here it is again. You think of that old Simon and Garfunkel song, Hello Darkness, My Old Friend. There you are. You've come back. You're not my friend, but you know. So be ready. Tell someone very clear, clearly that you're suicidal. That's why I put that post up that if you're so suicidal that you can't say anything, simply send a note to somebody and say, I need help. That's all you have to say. They'll know what you mean. They know you have bipolar. And sometimes that's maybe the hardest little sentence we'll ever send in our lives, but we have to do it. I have taught my whole family how to help me. And so any partner of mine or my parents, whatever, they will say, are you suicidal? Because I've asked them to do that. And I'll say, yes, I am, but I'm working on it. And then we have a plan of just talking openly about it. This will be hard because the illness doesn't let you see that you need help. It just won't do it. Saying this out loud breaks the spell bipolar has on your brain and allows others who are stable to take over and get you the help you need. You don't have to do this alone. Isn't this a great article? It's so good. You can go to a hospital emergency room, though to be honest, you know, our medical system here in the States and pretty much all over the world is pretty rough right now. So I would say if you do have a lot of suicidal thoughts and behaviors, just like I used to, I think you need a specific person, a specific doctor, a specific, specific friend or a warm line or group to call because I don't think going to the ER is really a first option anymore. Before, when it wasn't busy, you literally could get right into the hospital and it's just not like that. So let's plan ahead for something else besides the ER. Check your medications. Medications can make us suicidal, definitely. And I'm gonna end, I'm gonna read this more section then I'm gonna tell a story and then I'm going to ask for your questions. 
When you're stable, create a list of your typical suicidal thoughts. Mine are, I wish I were dead. If I get cancer, I won't get treatment. What's the point? I wake up every day and I literally have no purpose to my life. I'd rather be dead. Those kind of thoughts. They're going to have a pattern, by the way, your thoughts. When the very first suicidal thought occurs, you will be able to look at this list and say, oh gosh, there it is. Those are my typical thoughts. It's just bipolar. I need help. Look at your lifestyle and determine triggers that could be causing these thoughts. Of course, substances are a main problem. Cannabis can really make us suicidal, but it's really a bit odd because the way it makes us suicidal is that it tends to create dysphoric psychotic mania, and it's more of aggressive kind of suicidal behavior, such as driving fast or wanting to harm someone or harm ourselves. So I'm really careful with weed, of course, hallucinogenics, and then alcohol. Alcohol is a real problem with suicidal depression because alcohol is a depressant. Talk openly about suicidal thoughts with family and friends who are open to the discussion now. Like, here's what you can do if you think I'm suicidal. Here's what I'm going to do. Talk about it now. And remember, friends and family doesn't have to be your relatives. You can have family who are your best friends, right? Tell them how to help you. Tell them what to do if they see you are spiraling down into a suicidal episode. Remind them that it's an illness. And if and when you get sick, talk openly about getting help for the brain. So that's just the first part of this life-saving article. So this is me reading from OMG, that's me, volume two. And it's the one with the purple cover, available on Kindle and on Amazon. If you're new to my work, I really recommend, that's a great book to start, and then use Take Charge, because Take Charge was the first bipolar disorder management book. It, it's hard to believe now, but it was the first one, and it was the first book to mention triggers, and it still is, I think, the best management plan that you can use. All right, so if anybody has questions, go ahead and put them there, and then I'm going to tell you about my last suicidal episode, the big one, and what I did. So I went to France in 2016, and I was really, really careful about travel, and I was really careful about my bipolar and sleep. I did everything planned. So I planned almost, it was about six months in advance for not having an episode when I got there. And that meant that I worked on my sleep, where I was going to stay, my money, everything. And I did okay. I was, I was depressed, and it was a stressful time, but I certainly wasn't super sick. But I couldn't sleep. I just couldn't sleep. And, you know, that's a terrible thing for bipolar. I had Ativan, which I don't use a lot of. And, of course, we have to be careful with Ativan. It's addictive, etc. And I had a doctor in France say, why don't we try Ambien? And I had never tried Ambien before. I, had, I looked it up, of course. I looked up what the side effects were. I looked and I thought, I'm so desperate to sleep. I'm in France. Eight-hour time change. I've got to do something. So I took a small amount of Ambien. I slept, and within two days, I was so actively suicidal that I had to go back to the doctor and say what was going on, and this is what happened. I'm sitting in my little room. I was going to school in France because I love to study French, and I was sitting in my little dorm room, and I heard a voice. So this is where I say that suicide, suicidal thoughts are often hallucinations. I heard a voice, so a command voice that said, Julie, get out of the bed and jump off your balcony. And I went, oh, what? Because it had been a while. Julie, get out of the bed and jump off your balcony. You need to jump off your balcony. Get out of the bed and jump off your balcony. And I remember, of course, you know, I have a psychotic disorder and so I'm used to command voices. And I looked around and I, I was like, what the hell? Where did, I haven't, I have not had co command voice suicidal hallucinations in many, many years. What is going on? And luckily, because I know myself and I have a plan, I did exactly what the book said. And I went, is it France? I said, it couldn't be. I'd been there already for a couple of weeks. So there's no way it was France. Things were going well. Was it a relationship? Nope. I have no dudes, nothing. So was it school? Nope. No stress. Was it money? Well, I always worry about money, but no. And then I went, oh, Ambien. So of course I looked online and looked at the side effects of Ambien and how I managed to miss that some of the side effects are suicidal depression, I don't know. And I went off the Ambien and the suicidal depression went away. But imagine if I knew nothing. Imagine, first of all, if I didn't know I had bipolar, as I didn't for 15 years. Imagine if I didn't have a plan. Imagine if that drug was so strong, and I'm talking two days, guys, two doses, two days. I heard a voice tell me what to do and I almost, and I wasn't going to do it because I have a plan, but I got up and I went, what the heck is this? 
what the heck? So always look for medications and substances. We've gotta be really careful. We have a very, very difficult bipolar brain. So we've gotta be very careful. So if you have any questions, ask me. And that's my talk on how I manage suicidal depression. And for those of you who are new to my work, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but in reality, I have something called schizoaffective disorder, and I'm on the schizophrenia spectrum. So I started having psychotic hallucinations and delusions when I was 16 and didn't know what, I, what they were. It was sort of mild. And the first ones that I remember is I'm sitting in a bookstore in Hawaii, and I heard these booming voices just like the one in France when I was 56 years old, 54 years old, that said, Julie, you need to get up and leave. And I would get up and leave because I thought someone had told me to leave. And those were psychotic command voices. But then I had my first hypomanic episode, euphoric, in Europe when I was 17. Then at 18, I had a really big manic episode that sort of ruined my life in many ways. I was at a very prestigious, quite amazing university and one day just decided to leave and went up to a smaller university because I wanted to watch a hockey team in Canada. I flunked out of school, met my first boyfriend, manic out of my mind. And then when he broke up with me because I was sick, I went into a psychotic suicidal depression. I was 19. And then from age 19 to 31, I had just constant massive mood swings and hallucinations and delusions and didn't know what they were. And I was finally diagnosed in 1995 with bipolar disorder a year after my partner Ivan was diagnosed. So my whole adult life has been bipolar and psychotic disorder. So schizoaffective means that I have bipolar and a separate psychotic disorder. It doesn't mean I have schizophrenia. Psychotic disorders and schizophrenia, it's a category. So I have paranoid psychotic disorder. I do not have schizophrenia. Schizophrenia comes with a lot more symptoms that I don't have, but I'm on the schizophrenia spectrum, of course, because I have a form of a psychotic disorder. So think carefully about your diagnosis as well. So let me say hi to everybody who's here. How nice to have all you guys here. This is fantastic. Oh, and I'm going to, I always, I, I leave notes whenever I'm going to be live. So make sure you always check and see when I'm doing interviews or when I'm live. I haven't done much TV work lately. I've been working on a lot of other things. And so I haven't done it as much. So hi to everybody. Wow, this is a lot of people. How very nice to see you. Okay, so I'll say goodbye. Thank you so much. Let me make sure I got everybody. Thank you for joining me and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.